class, my name is Miss Ramon, and today we will be talking about public officials. Okay, who can tell me who he is? Anybody? No? Okay, so he is the Mansfield City Mayor. All right, and his name is David L. Cook. All right, does anybody know who he is? Greg. Greg, yes. So he is Greg Abbott and he is the governor of Texas. All right, this next person, I think most of us know who he is. Call it out if you know it. President Trump. President Trump, yes. He is the president of the United States and his name is Donald J. Trump. Okay, so let's watch this short video about mayors. David L. Cook and he was actually elected in 2008 and he's been serving his fifth consecutive term. Um, has anybody seen this building right here by chance? Yes. Yes? Yes. So you should see this on your way to the library right there by Dairy Queen. I know you guys love Dairy Queen so it's going to be right there. Next time you guys go to the library or drive by to Dairy Queen, keep an eye out for this building. This right here is going to be our city hall. Okay? All right, so let's move on to our questions. All righty. How many know, or who knows, how do you become a mayor? Who can tell me that? Majority votes. Great, yes. So as we just saw in the video, to become a mayor, you have to have the majority vote. So that means people go out and vote for you. I think whenever you guys drive by, sometimes you see these signs on the grass. Sometimes it'll be by, um, right by City Hall actually. A lot of the signs are right by City Hall during election time. And this is when people are trying to get their names out. And they want you to vote for them because they want to make a change. And that is how he's actually been reelected five times. All right. Um, how many years does a mayor serve? Three close he actually serves for two years that's going to be two years for mayors and um do you guys know where they get sworn in it's close to dairy queen the library city hall yes city hall so they actually get sworn in and sworn in means that they've been elected and now they're going to be officially the mayors all right okay so now let's learn a little bit about our governors. Okay, so one moment. All right. Okay. Okay. 
Every organization needs a leader. A ship needs a captain. A school needs a principal. A team needs a coach. You could probably come up with many more examples yourself. Take a state, for instance. We have 50 states in the United States of America, and each state has a multitude of people that work within its government. But just like the team players need a coach, all of those state workers need a leader, and that is where a governor steps in. The governor is also known as the head of the state or the chief executive officer. A governor is a state's ultimate decision maker, and with that comes great responsibility. Each state has its own constitution or written document that details how a state's government will be run. Within that document are the rules for who can become the state's governor, how long the term or service of governorship will be, and how many terms they can serve. Although different states disagree on several things regarding the position of governor, all states agree on two things. There can only be one governor at a time, and he or she must be elected by the people. Okay. All right, so. Perfect, so we just learned that Greg Abbott is our governor in Texas. Um, he is actually our 48th governor of Texas, and he's been governing since 2015. So that means we elected him in 2015 to be our governor, and we've elected him ever since to stay as our governor. All right, so based on the video that we just watched, who can tell me what is another word for a governor? A leader. A leader, that is correct. So something else we can call our governors are head of the state, because they are the head of the state. They're going to make the executive decisions for the state. Um, and it's mostly about um, being what is best for the state. So what's best for your parents and you and the schools. Um, something else is they're actually called chief executive officers, also known as CEOs. Okay. So another thing, um, what do you call the written document that states how the government will be run? The Constitution. The Constitution, exactly, that is correct. So states have constitutions which tell our government how to run the state. Can you guys imagine how it would be like if we did not have any rules, if we did not have anything that told us what street to, or what side on the street to, to drive on? That would be crazy. It would be a little bit chaotic as well. Okay, let's see. So, in the video they stated that there are two things that all states agree on about the position of the governor. So what two things do all states have to abide by? Can anybody name any of them? So, there actually, there can only be one governor at a time and they must be elected by the people. So these governors that you see here, so the governor of Texas, the governor of Arkansas, Louisiana, they have to be elected by their people. So anybody, the residents of the state vote for the governor. So if I live in Texas, can I vote for the governor in Kansas? No. Correct. So you have to be residing or living in that state in order to um, be able to vote for your governor. Okay. Sorry about that. Now let's talk about the president. Hello, boys and girls. Today, we're going to talk about the president's job. In the United States, the president is the leader of the executive branch. Do you know what the president does? Let's find out. U.S. citizens vote for a new president every four years. They choose from a group of people called candidates. These candidates want to become the next president of the United States of America. But not everyone can be a president. There are a few special rules. The president of the United States must be a U.S. citizen born in America, at least 35 years old, a U.S. resident, 
or someone who lives in America for at least 14 years. When a new president is elected, they become the leader of the executive branch. The president is also known as the commander-in-chief of the United States Armed Forces. The ceremony marking the beginning of a new president's duties takes place in front of the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. At the ceremony, the new leader of the country promises to preserve and protect the Constitution of the United States. Then, the new president moves to the White House to live and work. The White House is located in Washington, D.C., which is the capital of the United States. Each morning, the president goes to the Oval Office of the White House to work. One of the president's duties is to sign important papers. These can include bills passed by Congress. The U.S. president nominates a group of people who will advise and assist him in his duties. Together, these people form the cabinet of the United States. Ambassadors, Supreme Court judges, and other senior officials are also nominated by the president. The president of the United States travels all over the world to talk to other leaders. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. All right, so we just learned that. Mr. Donald J. Trump is our president of the United States, and he is actually the 45th president of the United States. So that's the 45th president, and he was elected in 2016. From the video that we just watched, can you guys tell me what branch is he, the president, the leader of? Is it the judicial? No, but very close. So it's actually going to be the executive. Remember, judicial has to do with judges, judicial judges. Um, executive is going to be because he makes the executive decisions on things. He is the top leader of our nation. Okay. Do you guys remember how long each term is for presidents? Is it four years? Correct. Yes. Yeah, so we just learned that our governor is how many? Two. Two years. And then how many years is our president? Four. Four years. Correct. So they are able to do two terms. So if each term is four years, how many years can um, Mr. Donald, Pre Donald Trump um, serve for? Eight years. Eight years. Correct. So you can serve up to eight years um, as a president. Um, who gets to vote for the presidents? Can you guys vote for presidents? Yes. No, you cannot vote for presidents yet. But as soon as you turn 18 years old, you are able to vote for your president. Can your teachers vote for presidents? Yes. Yes, correct. So every four years, we are able to either reelect the president that we already have, or we're able to choose a different president. It's just whatever the nation wants to do. Okay, so... What are some things that a person has to have in order to become a president? Can we have a dog as a president? Yes. As much as we probably want to, we cannot. Can anybody name a couple of things that takes to be a president? Born in the U.S. Yes, correct. So you have to be a U.S. citizen. A U.S. citizen, like you stated, means that you have to be born in the U.S. And you have to be at least 35. So, can most of your parents be presidents? Yes. Yes, so maybe one of you guys will be um, a president one day. As long as you're 35 years old, you'll be able to be a president. So, um, what's another word we can call a president? A leader. A leader, yes. But, more specifically, we can call him a commander-in-chief of the United States Armed Forces. Can you guys guess why... He is a commander-in-chief of the armed forces, or maybe what he's able to do with that title? 
Because he's the president. Well, yes, he's the president, but he is able to tell our armed forces, which is our military, what to do. He is going to be the leader of our army, too. So not only is he the leader of our country, but he's also the leader of our military. Okay, so... Where does he live? The White House. The White House. And who knows where the White House is located? In America. In, yes, in America. But where exactly? You guys remember it's going to be in the East Coast. Remember? North, South, East, West. So, he is actually, I'm sorry, the White House is actually located in Washington, D.C. What does D.C. stand for? D.C. stands for District of Columbia. All right, and that's where the White House is located. And that's where he goes to work. So, maybe your parents go to work at a bakery or at an office. Well, he has to go to work and live there. So, maybe that's kind of cool. He doesn't have to travel much. So now let's move on to our group activity. Um, so we are going to hand out these activities right here. It is the um, president, governor, and mayor activity. It's going to be completed. Um, complete the public officials worksheet by identifying the duties for mayor, governor, and president. And you're going to work together in your groups to complete this. So make sure you write your name on top that way I know whose it is and we are going to read each box down here each box has a little fact there are 12 facts and then each fact belongs to one of the public officials that's going to be mayor governor or the president make sure you read those thoroughly deciding your group what each box belongs in whenever you guys have set the answers and then cut them out, paste them in each space, and then come to me. Once each group is done, and I have confirmed that it's done, then we'll move on to the next. So remember, make sure you cut these out and you paste them where they need to be. And each spot has four pieces, and they're all going to be filled out. So make sure you work with your group and make sure that everybody agrees on it, okay? All right. Okay, so once we are done with this, we're going to move on to your individual activity. The previous, which was a worksheet, is going to be done in a group, but this right here is going to be done as an individual. That is by yourself. Nobody's going to be helping you. Not, your group is not going to be helping you. That's why you got to make sure that your answers on your worksheet are going to be correct and make sure you come with me before you move on to this step. You're going to complete the official's flipbook, the official, public official's flipbook by constructing the flipbook, cutting and pasting the information, and then adding a little illustration. So, you're going to need from your box some, you're gonna need a pencil, you're gonna need some markers or color pencils, whoops, whichever one you work, or whichever ones you wanna do, but I will say the markers are gonna show a little bit better on the construction paper, so you can do either or. You're gonna need some scissors, remember, if you are passing scissors along, you always want to make sure you hand this side with the holes to your partner. Do not ever hand the other side. That is very dangerous. You're going to need your glue stick. All right. You're going to need some construction paper, which I will hand to you as soon as you are done with your individual work. Once you're done with your individual work, I will hand you this paper. And you're going to need your public officials worksheet. All right. So to construct your flip book, Go ahead and grab your two construction papers. It doesn't matter. You can have the blue in front, the red in front, whichever one you want. Now we're going to hold it like this, or I'm sorry, vertically. That's up and down, not hamburger style, but hot dog style, up and down. Now we're going to fold it whenever you have two fingers in width or the size of here make sure it's two fingers all right so it's gonna look something like this now you're gonna tighten the top part and we're going to fold it 
over like so making sure that it's about two fingers so take your two fingers and put them on the side and so whenever it's all folded it's gonna look something like this okay so you're gonna have four flaps that's gonna be your title page your mayors your governors and your presidents okay on the top part make sure you write public officials because that's what we're working on right now and your name remember if you don't have your name I won't know who's to grade so make sure you have your name on it once you have it all folded and labeled as so please bring it to me so I can put a staple on top and you can continue on to the rest part so with your worksheet once you have all this cut up and pasted on here you're gonna cut out each section along with their title and you're gonna glue it on to the corresponding section in your flip book all right so this right here is going to say mayor and it's going to have the facts about the mayor also i want you to draw something that represents each public official it could be um in this case i drew a little sticker and it has red white and blue and it says the mayor with stars sometimes you get these kind of stickers when you vote it'll say i voted or something along those lines so that's what it represents to me anything it could be city hall for mayors it can be anything that represents a mayor a president and a governor um, so do that once you're complete please bring it to me and um, like I said make sure your name is written on it that way I know who's to grade remember to not forget your name all right Okay, so classroom modifications. For my English learners, my beginners level, I'm going to provide a worksheet in native language. So I will have the same worksheet that we are working on translated into their native language. For my intermediates, I'm going to simplify the verbal written instructions. So we're gonna do a little bit simplifying on the words that are on the actual worksheet in English to take away some of the um, more difficult vocabulary in it. For the advanced, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the keywords. So on here I will highlight um, cut out, glue, any of the major facts on here. I will go ahead and highlight those as well. That way they're able to decipher that. For my special education, I'm going to provide the pre-cut activity worksheet. Have the worksheet already pre-cut for them. And then have the student illustrate the representative as well. For my gifted learners, as soon as they are done with their, um, their flip book, I'm going to have them create a Venn diagram to show the relationship between each public official that is the, main, the mayor, the governor, and the president. Okay. Okay, so once we are all done, we are going to go over a few of our vocabulary today. So today we learned citizen. That is a person who is a member of a country either because of being born in there or being declared a member by law. So, if you are born in the U.S., you are a citizen. Yes, and specifically you are a U.S. citizen. If you're born in a different country, if you're born in China, you're a Chinese citizen. Or in Mexico, you're going to be a Mexican citizen or a Mexico citizen. Okay, so wherever you're born, that is where your citizenship goes to. A leader. It is one that leads or guides. So in this case, I'm the teacher. I am the leader of my classroom. At your house, your mom and your dad are the leaders of your house um, and so on. And like we've learned, our governor is the leader of our state. Our state, correct. And our mayor? Who's our the city. Our city, that's correct. So we have those different leaders for different positions. Okay, term. A term is a set period of time during which something happens. So, who can recall how many terms a president can have? Eight. Close. Can anybody else remember how many terms? Remember, not how many years, but how many terms? Two. Two. That's correct. So remember, for a president, each term is four years, okay? And they can have two terms, so that is a total of? 
Eight. Eight years, correct. So they can be a president for up to eight years. Vote, a formal expression of a choice in an election or other group decision. So I'm sure you guys had noticed that a couple months ago there was a lot of voting because we were voting for our president. Okay, so whenever it's time to vote, you go to the voting polls. Sometimes they are located in libraries or city halls. Um, and you go there and you vote for the officials that you want to have elected. So that is where we elect our president, who we've elected Joe Biden, and Joe Biden will be our next president elect. So whenever he gets inaugurated in January, which means that our current president, Donald Trump, will pass on his presidency over to our new president elect, which is Joe Biden. Election. So it is the process of choosing a person for office by voting. So when you go vote, you vote in the election. Okay? All right, so today we learned about the difference between a city mayor, a state governor, and a U.S. president. You completed the public officials worksheet as a group and the flipbook individually. Now I want you guys to take out your social studies journal and I want you to write one to two sentences on this question. What do you think it, I'm sorry, why do you think it is necessary to have public officials in our country. So I want you to take a couple minutes and just tell me why you think it's important. We learned about all the different types of officials, but now tell me why we need them. I mean, why can't we just live in a country without rules and without officials? So I want you to just tell me a couple sentences and tell me why you think it's necessary. Why do you think it's important? I mean, can't we just have a country and not have rules? I mean, if I want to wear pants to the pool, can I wear pants to the pool? So just give me a couple sentences, one or two sentences, and tell me um, why, why you think we need officials. As soon as you're done, bring it to me so I can stamp it, and then that'll be your exit ticket for today. Okay? If you guys have any questions, just um, let me know, and then I can help you guys.